Alright, that was a pretty good premiere, and I'm really hoping that this season can stay as good as it is right now, because this cast... Yeah, this is a good one, although of course it's because we've seen these people play before, some of them multiple times, because I'm pretty sure actually this season is perfectly divided where you have um, 10 people that have played multiple times before, and then you have 10 people that have just played one time and won one time. That's interesting. So we get everyone uh, flown out there onto that sand spit, then we have that uh, little champagne reveal of the two million dollar price even though Dalton Ross has confirmed that everyone is going to receive more money this time around where well, the worst place person actually isn't getting two and a half grand they get 25. that's worth it although how they determine worst placing with the edge i'm not entirely sure because you're going to have tons of people eliminated on the same day because i really would be shocked if at most more than uh, two people end up uh, leaving during the season. And even then two people I find to be a huge stretch because all that effort to get them out there and then they just say, eh, pfft, screw it. What? <laughs> yeah, so even if one of them leaves, that would be really disappointing, but we'll see what happens, okay. Division of the two tribes, um, Rob and Amber being on different teams, I expected that, but I was shocked to see that Tony and Sarah and that Natalie and Jeremy were on the same tribes, although I totally missed that Natalie and Jeremy were on the same tribe <laughs> until Bleeding Tribal Council, where it was pointed out to me. <laughs> Fail? Those two were... My picks, well, I didn't technically do picks for San Juan del Sur, but if I had done top picks for Tan San Juan del Sur, Natalie would have been there, yeah. So it's just like, come on, aren't you paying attention, dude? But I feel like that this was a good um, division. Um, am I rooting for the Blue Tribe? Uh, kinda. Because when I'm watching the challenges, I'm definitely more in favor of them, but I'll tell you this. The alliance that I am most curious about and um, fully supporting right now is actually Yule's alliance on um, the Red Tribe with him, Sophie, and um, those two other people. I think it was Wendell and uh, Nick. Really hope that I have Nick on the Red Tribe here, but I really see potential with that, especially with what they were able to do later on in this particular episode. So, because, um, Yule's an oddity, because he's one of the more smarter and arguably beloved winners out there, and yet, people haven't really heard from him that much after he, um, won his show, and he himself admitted that he didn't keep up with part of the Survivor community, although he is aware of what's been going on on, on the show. You can't necessarily um, ignore that unless you're actually saying, I hate the show, and why would you do that? It could happen, but we've got to see it. So, he's done his homework, so in many ways he's right back in to it, and I was a little bit um, surprised by that. Same thing with Danny just totally distanced themselves, it seems, and yet jumping right back in there. And then him and Sophie working together, that's going to be really interesting, because, yeah, they have Wendell, and hopefully, I, I have it right where it's Nick, but um, I really do think the brains are those two, so that's going to be one heck of an interesting duo if this stays together. So it goes to show, I'm definitely more supportive of, like, more people on the blue tribe, but the alliance I'm most interested in is this one. Because the other groups that were on the red tribe, where you had Tyson socializing with Amber, and, um, uh, who was the other person? I think it was Kim. 
Yeah, didn't have any faith in that group, but Tyson because he's a threat, Amber because of her association with Buster Robin, Kim because of the competition, and Kim herself even admits she's just like totally bamboozled the same way that um, uh, the old school people typically complain about when they get thrust into HVV or HVV after environment, though... I've kind of come to realize that I really should expand old school to, um, HVV, because I've, well, at least through token teens, because, um, with, HV, with HVV and Samoa being, uh, a transition stuff, because prior to that, even though there were idols... A lot of the times they didn't alter the game that much because China, the idols, um, weren't played, though they were factoring in people's minds. Um, Micronesia, despite people finding the idols over and over and over again, only one idol actually made a difference because people just kept getting blindsided with the idols in their, um, pockets. And then Gaboon, yeah, the idol was played, but it didn't have to be played. And the token teens, even though you had two idols, they won't use. So, really, you have to expand that, I think, now. Right. Okay, so where was I? Uh, oh, yeah, but yeah, Kim. Totally not expecting her to keep up with this. Now, Devil's Advocate to that statement. She did all. She also said that she was the one making decisions back in One World. People were coming to her, and now she has to go to other people. It's the same effect that Tom was in in HVV. Uh, where he was the one that was never in real danger of going until right at the end, where he kept winning immunities. And even then, uh, Ian and Katie went along with the pl original plan anyway, and... He was the one that actually, um, started saying things about Ian, even though he did have more reason to than I thought he did when I first watched that season, uh-huh. But, there's that other argument, it's just because she's not in the power position now. So I know that there's one other group on the, uh, red tribe, but I'm forgetting who they are, right? now and uh i'm sure that i'm gonna hear more about them later because that's the group that didn't have anyone affected mm -hmm. so then the blue tribe um i was actually a little bit surprised when boston rob and pav started working together and it's just hilarious how rob walks up to pav the same way he walks up to amber and all stills and he goes what do you think, us two and well pav's not gonna say no because that would be stupid but I'm sure that those two thought about it for a bit, and they're like, wait a minute. We're the two biggest people on this tribe to have a target on our backs. But, no one expects us to work together, so if we do, and make it a little obvious that we actually are working together, hmm, might be able to do something here. It's, you know, them pulling a Jeremy, because it seemed like in both his seasons he was trying to make alliances with people that seemed less obvious, because his behavior on Hunapu, um, it didn't seem to be the most, um, predictable bit, because he did seem to be talking to a good amount of people on that tribe, though he, um, aligned with the women on his tribe, and the one tribal that they, uh, went Two, and then um, in Cambodia, sure, he had that close bond with Stephen and Kimmy for most of the season, but I'm like, dude, make an alliance with Spencer, because even though people should think that you're, to get, you're gonna make an alliance with him, ironically, I don't think they will, so do it anyway, and you two can make one heck of a duo. Hmm? Now, granted, he didn't do much of that, but that's because we didn't get much camera time with him. Now that um, Natalie's given him the fire token, I'm sure that's going to matter um, a lot more. I'd hope to um, 
see more from him there because I was really excited to see him come back compared to a lot of um, other people. Not to say that I am not disappointed in this cast. I really like this cast, but... Right. So then, um, let's talk about that big moment where Boston Rob, um, cracks Ben and then gets the lowdown from him that Danny, um, have been saying some things against him. And then that confrontation, that was really interesting because Rob does the typical, you know, oh, so you've been saying things about me bit, though he doesn't raise his voice nearly as much as... The majority of people do in that situation, and then Danny makes the really, really interesting decision to openly admit, yes, I said that. And I'm surprised no one else added the bit of, of, well, people weren't people saying things about that to you last time, or weren't you doing this to her? Because I'm pretty sure Pav was standing right there when that happened. Hmm. So I'm starting to think that the being honest factor could be back again. That's going to be kind of interesting. Okay. And even though I think Boston Rob was trying to, um, toot? Is that the right term? The idea of keeping the pre-HVV people on that team together? I don't really see that because I think Ethan is just going to go with the flow and do whatever he can to avoid stuff, but I don't totally blame him because it's been said by a lot of other people. His seasons were polar opposites because in Africa, 0% chance of being voted out all the way until the final three for crying out loud, and he didn't get a vote against him the entire game. And then it all snows, he was the target from day one, although for having a target on... And from day one, he got pretty darn far for someone in that position. Mm -hmm. Okay, although part of that had to do with the quit, so I'll give you that. Hmm. And then uh, Danny, she's going to be really interesting because both Dalton Ross and um, Jeff put her as their um, winner picks, and I was thinking that if I were to do um, a uh, episode one winner pick, Danny was actually one of three females that I was considering, the other one being um, Natalie and um, Pav, but only because I like Pav. I really do not think that she's going to um, triumph over this. Eventually, the Boston Rob train is going to be debunked here, although I'm hoping that they go for him before her, because I just, you know, like to see her get pretty darn far in the game, and it may's people in that regard again. Rob, he's been in that situation multiple times before, although, oh, oh, man! I just realized that because of the edge, this means that Boston Rob is officially going to be on the jury now, unless he makes it all the way to the end. He's not going to make it to the end. Uh, so there goes his streak of always being booted out before the jury or getting to the end. Shoot! But... Since Pav probably isn't going to make day 36, which is how far she made it in, um, uh... Cook Eye Lens, I guess we're gonna have to say goodbye to a lot of trends. For some of these people. Oh well. Okay. Um... Yeah, you can tell how much I'm enjoying this. I'm just... Saying all kinds of stuff about these people. Um, can't remember if they're on the blue tribe or not. It's kind of silly. The whole debacle involving um, Adam and Denise walking off and then um, getting lost. I actually do think that they were lost because the clip in just that context alone didn't make much sense because they were looking at the map and they're going, well, there's no trail that's marked as going that way on this map, so it's this direction. No. But when they say that they're lost, oh yeah. They were totally lost. And then Anna makes the valid point. Was I lost? Yes. Was I talking to her about strategy while we were lost? Of course! Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. 
Now, I don't deny that it does look suspicious, because you have to take the word for it, but... As he pointed out, there's other targets to um, point out, and he said that me and Denise have technically never met before, and I'd wager that that's true. Like, the definition of met in this day and age is kind of odd, because is met in person, online, in person for more than a couple minutes? Because, like, my dad can argue that he met Alex Haley once, because he walked into an elevator with him, they exchanged haze, and then one of them got off on, like, the next floor. Hmm. Does that really count? Okay. Um, then the poker, um, alliance bit. Well, I actually didn't even know that that clip existed, uh, so... Uh, can't really comment on it there. Sure, it seems to be biting um, Tyson and Kim in the butt, but uh, but I think Tyson knows in the back of his mind it's not just a poker game. People know that I'm close with Rob and Amber. Okay, that was just one example. Kim, I, I think it has potential, but after what happened in this episode, I don't know about that because... Given how Amber has gone and Kim was perceived to be as part of that group, it's possible that she might be a vote that that uh, foursome can use, especially since I'm pretty sure Kim is the only other person on that tribe who has only played once, though granted they could use Tyson, but I would use Tyson more as a deflector. Keep the attention on him, whereas Kim, I think that they can use her and then... Uh, you argue that their strategic brilliance was way more compared to her, and, like, I said this from the very second that I saw the f that Kim was going to be on this season. Oh, nice. She's totally not going to be able to stock up to this competition, though. All right. Okay, um, talking about that, um, tri First Tribal Council, and Dalton Ross has revealed that there's a lot more, um, whispering going on there than, uh, what we saw. I was a little surprised that it was Natalie, because while Adam, thankfully I remember now, had floated the idea of those two, it wasn't really talked about that much other than him. Uh, but I guess they have the reasons for um, booting her, though I do find that to be a bit of a bummer that, number one, she suffered the Tina Wesson situation where she gets the bookend of being the winner of a season to being first out, especially since both of them, first time they play, never had that name written down. That's an interesting twist. And then also there's the fact that in San Juan del Sur, her twin was first booted, so... Ooh. But I guess... They just figure that she's a little more explosive, and they do, just don't want to deal with that, whereas Jeremy's more calm, and Kaleka did, and they're probably thinking the same thing about him that they think about Boston Rob, where they're like, okay, I definitely want to get rid of you, and you definitely want to get rid of me, but the thing is, if we're talking tribe dynamics here, you are still trying to help us out to regard list, at least before the merge or the switch, because you know that they're going to do a um, switch, though it's going to be interesting to see if they expand it to um, three tribes again or keep it as two. I really hope that they keep it as two. I just like to see that expansion to three tribes really be put to um, rest. I have no problem with it being three tribes from the get-go. I have no problem with that. But this expanding business, just give it a rest, okay? I think it's time that you do that, because before last season, you want to know the last time we had a season that just had two tribes and it stayed as two tribes? San Juan del Sur. Now, granted, Worlds Apart and um, possibly one other season... Koran were free tribes from the get-to-go, so that's not nearly as bad, okay? So, uh, okay, fine, we'll, we'll expand that up to Worlds Apart, but just uh, give it a, a break, please. Right. 
So I do feel sorry for her, but I really do think that um, this is just showing this season's going to be gut... Cutthroat, not gutthroat. Hello, that doesn't make sense. Cutthroat, spill the guts. There we go. And how do I feel about this fire token situation? Um, it's not a bad idea. I do think the idea of adding just personal items that you can purchase is honestly kind of dumb, given that this is a winter season. But if it wasn't a, t a um, all star season, I can see more benefit to um, having that. You should have it there, but for this season, it seems really stupid uh, to have all that stuff there. Just keep it for some kind of advantage, be it idol, to will to somebody, advantage in a challenge, all that stuff. Just keep it to that for this season. Okay. Um, then that other challenge. Um... I was amazed that the blue truck was able to catch up, just I did not expect that at all, but they managed to pull a pretty good comeback, especially after Rob literally threw, I think, all but two members of his tribe over that wheel, including himself. And even then, the whole time I was thinking about it, I'm like, okay, yeah, you can use that strategy to get everyone over, but how are you going to get over, especially after spending all that energy? Yeah. Turns out they just reversed that strategy and, um, got even to get on someone's shoulders, think it was Ben, and then grab Rob, and everyone else just t pushes the thing over, so... Good on those guys. And as Dalton Ross points out, the ring toss things, even though Malcolm and I think a couple of other people have made those challenges look easy. Heck, I think Wendell participated in something like this in uh, Ghost Island. I could be wrong about that. It's not easy to do it. So Jeremy just figured it out and he made it work. So good on you, Jeremy, because even though it would have been a little more interesting to see the Blue Tribe go back, I actually didn't want them to go. I wanted to see what the other tribe would do. The end result, um, okay, it made sense. Because that breaks up the biggest duo in the game on paper. But I do, um feel like it was a little underwhelming, especially after you had free votes for Kim, because I'm like, you don't generally have someone get that far ahead in the votes and then have somebody else get a whole bunch of votes. Now, that's what happened with Ozzy in uh, Micronesia, where he and Jason each get a vote. Jason gets three more, then Ozzy gets four more. But that generally doesn't happen. It's back and forward, back and forward, or everyone, someone gets half the vote, someone gets the other half. But yeah, I do understand why they did it, though. I totally understand that. Um, I'm sure that there's a few other things I could mention, but we're going to get a lot more information on these people with future episodes, so um, let's... Sit back and um, see what happens. And I'm really looking forward to where the season is going to go because I'm definitely listening to um, everyone's videos for this season. Heck, I'm even listening to Richard Hatch's um, recaps, although um, he doesn't seem to have the greatest um, objective based on the one that I've seen so far, but I'll give him another chance and see if I want to um, continue with that. And yes, in case you're wondering, that does mean that I wasn't um, listening to everyone's stuff before um, this. Although everyone is really just Dalton Ross and Rob's sister Nino. But for uh, David vs. Goliath, Edge, and I, Land of Idols, I just completely skipped Rob's sister Nino for the most part. And just read all of Dalton Ross's stuff because I wanted to play catch-up. Since I pretty much am caught up, because if it's the last season, can you really say that you're I'm caught up? Right, definitely going to take my time with this one. 
Okay, this is officially the longest premiere recap ever, but it should be if it's an all-star season. Come on, especially if it's all winners. <laughs>